everybody. Uh, editing Cami here. Sorry to have to start out the episode like this. I just feel like since it's been a while, a lot has changed and I should probably start off the top by saying this. Um, you're going to see me like looking off to the side a lot. I'm reading my prompter. Um, you're going to see this in the next handful of videos probably while I <laughs> try and figure out how to get everything all set up how I want it. I hope you guys don't mind. I apologize in advance. This video is not my best work, but it is my first video back, so please be gentle, please be nice. And with that, I hope you enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Cami, and I am a chronically online college student. And oh my goodness, has it been like a whole year since I've been on this channel. For anybody who stayed around waiting, thank you so much. Um, for anybody who's new, thanks for joining. Um, today's content and the next few uploads of content, all of the upcoming content, is going to see a little bit of a shift from the previous style of content um, that is already available. This video in particular is going to be reading an essay I wrote in uh, March of 2022 for my English course, and it is entitled Practice Makes Patience. Tell me if you have ever heard any of the following phrases. Rome wasn't built in a day. A watch pot never boils. You have to walk before you can run. And good things come to those who wait. Or even patience is a virtue. If so, it was most likely in your youth by an adult trying to tell you that you couldn't do something that you wanted to because you're too young, it's too late, it's too cold, you're too short, or the end all be all because I said so. Anytime any of these phrases were uttered at me, I would recoil and wonder, what does it even mean? Well, after years of wondering, I now know. The phrase patience is a virtue means the ability to wait for something without frustration is a useful skill and a good aspect of one's personality. While I feel like an aspect of this phrase is true, I believe that patience is not a virtue, but rather a skill that takes both time and effort to develop and master. I believe that the best way to develop patience is to actively practice it. To master the skill, you must demonstrate or teach it to another person, specifically a child, as they're the most vulnerable and oftentimes the source of the greatest frustration and impatience. I believe that the more you practice and demonstrate patience to children, the more patience and overall control you'll obtain for all aspects of your life. Over the next few minutes, I will explain how developing and demonstrating patience takes lots of practice and time to obtain and control. The Oxford English Dictionary defines patience as the calm, uncomplaining endurance of pain, affliction, inconvenience, etc., or the capacity for such endurance. But there are so many varieties of patience, Equanimity is a variety qualified by the mental fortitude of a person. Likewise, composure is qualified by overall temperament or mental state in general. Self-control, forbearance, and tolerance are other synonyms with all slightly differing meanings about qualifying abilities to have or to be patient. But what about on the other hand? What are the meanings of the words agitation, frustration, impatience, and instant gratification? And how do they relate to patience? Well, agitation and frustration are synonyms for each other, and Oxford English Dictionary defines them as disturbance or perturbation of the mind or feelings, or general feelings of disappointment and disturbance. I chose these antonyms because they're the most common feelings experienced by people when dealing with a situation in which they're also feeling impatient. Usually, the first thing I notice when my patience is slipping is rising feelings of agitation. For example, when I'm driving on the highway and all of a sudden a car will jump in front of me and then start driving slower. I know you can relate. I instantly feel agitated and frustrated. I wanna scream and curse and throw up my middle fingers and just blast my horn telling this person to get the hell out of my way, how dare they. Another example with a different end result is when I'm helping my boyfriend, now husband, watch his niece and nephews. The kids' volumes and energy will rise, causing similar feelings of agitation, overwhelm, and frustration. However, I don't have the option to behave as I would in a road rage situation where I'm contained in my own vehicle. I have to demonstrate proper self-regulation and coping skills. I have to find tolerance for the agitation and proceed 
with calm and with patience, which isn't always the easiest thing to do. If you have or are close with children, you will know it's difficult to remain calm when you have a group of eight-year-olds screaming at the top of their lungs inches away from your ears. They don't want to wait for you to finish a phone call, a conversation, a chore, or a simple email. They want and they demand your attention. And they all have different wants and needs, but require that you, the almighty adult, meet their needs immediately. There have been times that I've lost my patience and ended up yelling at or being snide to the kids in my life. However, while I continue to work on further developing my patience, I know that it's not going to be the last time that I lose patience. This is a crucial part of the process. This is the reason I've chosen this topic. There's so much to learn about patience as a concept, as a skill, and as a practice. Kids are the most impatient beings I have ever met. And because of this, they're the perfect model for how to obtain, develop, enhance, and demonstrate patience in our everyday life. During my research for this essay, I learned that patience in humans is related to our brain development, which explains one of the reasons why children are so impatient. According to Christina Atans, a psychology professor at University of Ottawa, as quoted in the article, how to Help Your Kids Be a Little More Patient by Steve Felichman. Waiting so long is hard for kids because their lives have been about you being there for them. And suddenly, for whatever reason, you aren't. Cole reiterates that while a child may not... Who the fuck is Cole? So clearly there's some confusion. Uh, the article that I'm referencing is by Steve Felichman, and he references a bunch of other professors of psychology and childhood development. So Cole is one of those other professors mentioned. That's who the fuck Cole is. <laughs> Cole reiterates that while the child may not see you taking a phone call or finishing an email as a threat, it does cause them to feel unsettled. I mean, think about it. Your direct attention has been on them every moment of their life, and now they don't have your direct attention. What if something happens? It's not conscious, but they're always motivated to maintain the connection. So as someone modeling patience to a child, what can we learn and how can we utilize that information? Well, we can use a child's need for connection to divert and redirect their attention and delay gratification. We can make sure to be explicit and concrete in our rules and communication with them, and we can find new ways to teach patience. By doing these things, we are laying the groundwork for patience in a way that keeps the adult calm, which further models the behavior according to Kimberly Cuevas, also quoted by Steve Kalchaman. By telling and showing what patience is, it gives children an opportunity to practice and model it for themselves in school, on the playground, and at home. For me personally, the way I label and model patience with children may look different from your way, but that doesn't mean that one way is right and another way is wrong. While I may take steps to identify the trigger, take time for myself away from said trigger, and then come back to have a conversation with the child about my laps and patience with them, you may distract the child with a breathing exercise, showing them how to do deep breaths and self-regulate when they're in a time of stress. Or you may co-regulate with them while you remove yourself from the triggering stimuli. Neither way is right, but neither way is wrong either. Child rearing is a difficult skill that takes lots of patience as well as input from other villagers who are helping this child find themselves on their way to join the real world. But what do we do when we're trying to model patience and we feel it slipping? The experts have an opinion that seems to overlap in many areas. For example, taking a deep breath was a tip on maintaining patience I saw repeated over all three of the resources I used for research on this essay. Thomas Berrien, PhD, states in his article, The Skill of Patience, that the best course of action to develop our own skills of patience are to slow down, think, choose your battles wisely, and surrender to the fact that sometimes, most times, the reason we're feeling impatient is because the thing we're experiencing is beyond our human control, and that's a natural part of life. In researching and writing about patients, I've learned so much about myself and also child development that I would have never known. I'm aware I still have a lot of learning and practice yet to do, but I'm glad to have a larger toolbox to bring with me into these future instances where the frustration and agitation are strong and the patience is thin. I've learned that children do develop patience as their brain gets bigger and stronger and they're able to understand more complex ideas. Most importantly, I have found that lots of the experts, psychologists, and professors who've done the studies and seen the results firsthand agree with me that patience in the way we usually experience it is not a virtue, but rather a skill that will naturally develop over time. But it does still require some fine tuning and development to reach peak potential. Thank you so much for watching my video. This was a really fun essay to revamp. I felt like this was a really good way to like dip my toes back into making content. I know it's completely different than some of the other stuff I've done, 
but I am a little bit of a, definitely a liberal arts student. We know this, but I definitely have a passion for writing. I'm, I'm publishing my works by myself in this medium. So my questions for you, my lovely viewers, is what aspects of patience do you need to work on still? And if you were my professor, what grade would you give this video? All of my sources are going to be listed in the description below if they weren't already listed on screen. And you can follow all of those to start your own research if this topic piqued your interest at all. And with that, the video is over. See you next time. Bye.